Uh, we're ready to get going here with our APAM for today and our plan for SALS 1279, 1280, and 1281. Let's make sure we have everyone on the phone and here in the room that we need to be going. We have our stereo high priority slip assessment. That is front has 323 and rear has 323. Those are good. And we'll now go into our science block. The murmurs in the room say 67. Oh, okay. That was not the answer I was expecting. Okay, so our 45 minute of extra awake time was not the problem. We were. After we take the image, we retract. We close the molly cover, and then we are going to set up to DRT Comas. So we spin the turret, and we go down and select the DRT and brush the surface. After we DRT, we are going to come up and do uh, DRT inspection imaging, mask scan. Obviously, this is a minimum distance path uh, relative to either a dog leg through this area, which was the other thing we considered this morning, or a, a previous um, back track and come around a uh, strategic look. Um, the other things we traded were the specific um, wheel wear concerns within those paths. Uh, uh, our temperatures are well within our limits, so we're ready to go. Great, thanks. Uh, okay, PDC. All right, uh, all instruments are currently marked healthy and we do not believe that there are any health or safety issues. It also looks like all activities that were planned did complete successfully. One Kim Cam instrument command error as a result, so that will hopefully be dispositioned later this shift uh, and I'll be working that with the uh, Kim Cam EPDL. Do you see how close we get to that rock in the beginning? Yeah, no, I saw that. No, this is good. So, okay, so we're kind of just okay. passing right over now. Okay, this so here's our, this is the one. So there's these two rocks that are. So one, yeah, those are actually on the surface. Both of those, right? This guy makes me more nervous than this guy. And this face of this guy. So I think if this, the probability of hitting the inside face now is completely I think we're, I'm, you know, I'm most nervous about this one, so I'm going to split the difference and put him right down the middle mm -hmm. of our yeah. drive path. Yeah. And then we're just going to drive over it, and then instead of doing a turn in place that would get us close, we're just going to gently arc around, which keeps us kind of away from all those guys. And this one looks like totally benign. So we're going to hit this guy. And that one looks, that's a little smaller. Right You're going to skim over the side of it there, right? Yeah, before when I just did a turn in place, we were straddling those rocks, but we just got too close to this. Okay. Well, we're driving pretty close to right over the top of that guy. You could turn a little bit more. Just do a sharper, or do a sharper arc. It's using the same resources, so I wouldn't expect one to work either, okay. but at least it won't. It was, you know, before crashing, so now it's, so now it's, at least it's doing it. Yeah, so do the slope one. Yeah, that's probably, that's a good, that's a good amount, so. <coughs> cool. Yeah, it looks much like, better. Yeah, it, we'll just keep um, whittling away and I think it'll be more and more robust. Yeah, it's definitely much better now. Hi, I'm Stephanie Oy and I work at NASA JPL as a Mars Curiosity rover driver. 
To plan our rover's activities, we use images that were taken by the rover with the left and right eye camera to build 3D terrain models. And with our red and blue anaglyph glasses, we can see the terrain in 3D like the rover would see it. To do operations remotely, we wear two headsets. On one ear, we talk to the other rover planners, and on the other ear is the rest of the uplink team.